Well, welcome everyone. Um, my name is John Dupuy, and uh, I'm the CEO of iWake Technologies, and uh, the team also calls me calls me the Chief Practitioner. Is um, using this technology that uh, and having such great joy to to get this out in the world and share with you guys. Well, we have the uh, well known Joe Ko with us. Hi, Joe. Hi, John. And, and uh, I don't know, this project started out a year and a half ago. Would that be accurate? Yes. Yeah, I'm not very linear in my time thing, but we started talking about it because uh, Doug had done, uh, Doug, uh, Joe had done, oh, by the way, uh, Doug Prater's here, our CTO, and, and many things. He wears many hats in, in the, uh, on the iWake team. And uh, we were talking about a journey to the depths of a uh, uh, journey to the center of the self, which was a, a really powerful uh, track that you did. And also for people who may not know you, uh, you're in London, you're in the UK, you're a master hypnotist. And I don't know how you figured where you learned to, to make uh, brain entrainment music, but you're also extraordinarily good at that. And in addition, you are a Shakespearean actor. So I think the tone of the voice and the timing and all of that beauty that you bring from that practice into these projects has been really extraordinary. So thank you for that. Thank so you. we were talking about a journey to uh, the self and in, in transpersonal psychology uh, or in, yeah, and let's just stick with the transpersonal psychology. When you say the self with a big S, that means that unitive experience where um, in, in, a moment of grace or a moment of practice or a moment of serendipity, the, the, the boundaries of our individuality go away. Our little ego self kind of just dissolves. And that moment, it, it, it seems to be that we experience what we really are at the deepest level, which is everything. And everything is mysteriously is conscious. And everything emerges from consciousness moment to moment. And that's where you, um, you led us in, in a journey to uh, the center of the self. And I was thinking, well, maybe, maybe we could do one of the same thing because, you, you know, I just love this product, but the journey to the center of the soul. Because um, in, in my studies of transpersonal psychology over the decades, I've, I've noticed that any... Um, um, any spiritual or, or psycho-emotional growth system that denies uh, the, the uniqueness of the individual and the importance of that in the expression and the experience of non-dual uh, consciousness or, or divinity gets all screwed up, you know? And uh, I mean, uh, the Zen movement in, in the United States had tremendous problems with that because there's, it's basically a path that says, well, there is no self, get over it, it's just an illusion. Well, when we don't work with it, we don't discover its depth, it turns into a pathological mess. And the ego that doesn't exist ends up kicking our ass and making a bloody mess of just the whole situation. So that's when we started talking about that and, and maybe you can uh, pick it up from there, Joe. Sure, well, the most important thing and I, I think I'd, I'm going to begin from here just in case I forget to include it later, because the, the most important thing for me is that if we're working with what is the soul, how do you connect with your soul? How do you stay true to your soul? Then what we're working with is something that's here and now and that's present, that's already in your experience, not... 12,000 planes into the stratosphere in some other astral dimension where there's some geometric shape that you're trying to touch that's just out of reach. No, 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 no. <laughs> here, here, here and now what's already present and that within our language, we maybe not constantly, but it's very familiar to us within our culture and within ways of talking about it, where we say that music it's so soulful that there is soul within that music or when we talk about someone having lost themselves they've kind of sold their soul uh for <laughs> could be for wealth and riches but not necessarily could be for fame uh for for whatever but the word soul we, we talk about um 
connecting with someone soul to soul of someone being a young soul or an old soul mm -hmm. and it's 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 all around it's all around our language and it points to something and i we know what that is even if we can't fully articulate what it is we know what it means when we're being true to ourselves and, and true to our soul and we know what it means when we've lost ourselves in bureaucracy in injunctions that other people have put upon us where we're kind of putting ourselves aside and don't get me wrong sometimes it's necessary to sacrifice uh, some of your own fulfillment in order to help someone else. This is not, the whole point of this is not just about hedonism, hedonism, give me, give me, 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 I want it now. Of, of course not. But sometimes people follow rules and injunctions and what other people told them they should be, uh, what they must be when they grow up, what they have to do with their lives. And there comes a point when they've forgotten. They've forgotten who they actually are. They've forgotten what really matters to them, which is more than hedonism. It's more than I want the cookie. That's right. It's, it's more than I want the toy. It's what's meaningful for me. What's my purpose? What do I want to create in this time that I have on this planet? Who am I? What, what matters to me? How do I want, to, how do I connect with others? How, uh, how can I contribute? There's, there's all, but that that comes intrinsically. It comes from within, and so the, the the basic premise for all of this is reconnecting with that intrinsic knowledge, that intrinsic intuition about your path, your calling, about who you are at what we can call the level of of your soul, of of who you are at that deepest level. Uh, that's what all of this all everything that i've been creating that we've we've been bouncing ideas back and forth but what's gone into this project is about reconnecting you to your calling to your soul yeah you know and i think i think developmentally there may be a time for hedonism you know a time to, uh, as a young person that you go out and you hopefully uh, you get over it in your youth but you do everything that you that all the forbidden fruit is is experimented with and it's tried and uh it can really be exciting and great for a while and there's very you know powerful passing states but at a certain point that begins to feel empty mm -hmm. and it's it's as if we're just living our lives on the surface you mm -hmm. know and it's very shallow and it's not not satisfying and that's when when the soul begins to speak and that's when we begin to pay attention often and we begin to uh who am i what am i here to do you know i seem to be doing this and you maybe you're even successful uh in your your line of work and something but there's just something vacuous and and uh existentially uh void i guess in, in, in a bad way and we begin to look it happened to me um i started going into the wilderness and doing vision quest and I, I was pretty clear, you know, it's just like creator, man, you got to give me a vision, you know, you got to give me a mission. You got to give me something to do for my people and for, you know, all sentient beings. I mean, a little thing, but just show me a way to walk in the world or I'll bloody die of despair, you know? And uh, I, I think that, uh, yeah, I was out, you know, on the canyon rims and in the desert fasting and praying three to four days different times and looking for that and it began it began to emerge and and the, and the i i guess in a, in a very uh, soul-centric way and at that time I, I was uh during that period i had native american mentor and teacher wallace black elk and uh i really absorbed i mean i i, I never walked the red path so to speak i didn't i was initiated to all those things but we were pretty close and he was very kind and good to me and I just remember the beauty of that spiritual tradition that is, is very uh, monotheistic. I mean, the great spirit, Wakantanka, it, it moves through all things. It's right there in it. But, but it also pays deep attention to the individuality and preciousness of each being. So even if you're eating another uh, life form that's done with great love and great respect, and we are called... Um, to find out 
especially men. I think they, they figure that women pretty much have figured it out already, but we need some help. Uh, unless you're a medicine woman, then you go through these other things. But, but um, finding out, you know, creator, how, what, what is my gift? What am I here to do? And there'll, there'll be an initiation ceremony off of the vision quest or uh, other, other ceremonies. And that initiates one into, into this finding oneself. And you stop being a boy and you start to become a man. And uh, I think it's a really, really important journey. And without it, we tend to, that's why it's so, so essential in depth psychology or just in, in creating healthy human beings is to find out what that is. Because if, you know, the, the hedonistic adolescent thing continues into adulthood and later adulthood, which we see often, it's, it's akin to the question that Jesus posited in, in the Gospels, you know, what shall it profit a man if he gain the whole world and lose his own soul? And the answer is not much. And it's a tragedy. And I think, I think uh, we can feel uh, people who are soulful, people who are living their lives from their depth, as opposed to people that just kind of uh, disengaged or cut off from the depths of themselves. And there's just a, there's a whole different a vibration and frankly it's for me it's painful and you know I, I, it's not something i really want to hang out with so and doug did you have anything you wanted to add to this uh uh soulful conversation because i know you do live your life in the deep side of the pool most of the time yeah it's a very important and timely gift that you're bringing to us joe i've um been a big big fan and benefited tremendously from all of your work. Um, profound releasing has been such an important part of my journey. And this came at, at such a beautiful time for me when I had started to lose touch through some things going on in my life with what I needed to keep moving forward. And I think that what you're doing here is just going to be so invaluable to so many people in in the world, in our culture right now. It's such a, a beautiful gift. Um, in addition to what you have done through these guided meditations, I'm very curious about what you did in the delivery of it and the music and entrainment with it to help support moving deeply into these states and connecting with the soul in that way. Sure. So w one of the things I've frequently, not always, but frequently aimed to do when creating layers of brainwave entrainment is to take people into deep states, sometimes right down to the theta delta border, sometimes more into mid theta. And to, so that's, because of course not everyone watching this will have a clue what I'm talking about there, but that's um, associated with shamanic states. It's also associated with going into a dream like state uh, of what we drift into as we go into, uh, into REM at night, into REM sleep. When we start dreaming, there's um, what's called the hypnagogic state where you're, you're drifting down and you start to get dreamlike images and you begin processing things in a different way. You begin processing them less rigidly. You could say less left hemispherically, where rather than knowing exactly what this is and exactly what that is, and everything's clear and defined, um, you know, that the left hemisphere has sometimes been compared to a hall of mirrors that enjoys its own reflection, but never lets in what's new, never lets in the fluidity of nature. It's very, okay, this is that, and I know the answer to that, and bum, 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 and I've got my beautiful little mental picture of the world. But when you drift down into a deeper state, that softens, things open, you begin to be able to process things in a different way and tap into intuitions and insights that you wouldn't normally have access to. And so a lot of the guided meditations that I've been created are about taking people into that deeper dreamlike state where they can, where intuitions and um, spontaneous insights come more easily and 
bringing into that uh, 40 hertz gamma waves. <laughs> but that, that essentially, I mean, that's been found in um, a, a lot of mindfulness meditations but when they've um, studied people, especially doing loving kindness meta practices, there's a strong, that, that's a very fast frequency, um, 40 hertz gamma, and it's sometimes hypothesized it's the binding frequency of, of consciousness. It's, but certainly the subjective effect of listening to and, and being having brainwave entrainment at that level is, uh, to put it very simply, is clarity, complete clarity. So I'm very interested in how do you combine deep, deep states of dreamlike reverie with complete clarity and awareness. And those are exactly the patterns that have been observed in people when they're having intuitions. So it, it's that combination of theta and gamma. And uh, there's a particular element to these tracks of um, cleansing, uh, particularly in track two, of releasing and, and cleansing and um, clearing out those injunctions from the outside, those rules that, and values that may have been pushed upon you by others. And that as, as that happens, the gamma frequency is, is ramped up, the gamma frequency, the amplitude of it is, is increased. So you, you get a, the subjective experience, and this is what people have reported who've listened to it as well, is that you get a complete sense of clarity, of being able to see those values and judgments and other people's life plans that they may have had from you, being able to see them all with complete clarity from the outside, with the fluidity and the sort of, um, you know, the, the dreamlike absorption and freedom of being able to separate yourself from those, to see them from the outside and to make a decision about, is that, is that how I want to be living my life from now onwards? Are those things that other people pushed on me? Maybe very well intentioned, uh, you know, you, you should grow up to be a doctor, a lawyer, uh, you should do this, you shouldn't do that, you'll, you'll never do this. You, they may have been, you know, maybe people said you'll never do something because they didn't want you to be disappointed. It's not that, the, it's not that there were a bunch of big baddies out there trying to spoil your fun. The, people say things for the best, with the best of intentions, but is that the plan that is true for me, for my life, for who I really am, and for me being true to myself? And so it gives you a chance to step outside of that left hemispheric, neat and tidy hall of mirrors where you think you've got everything, this is how the world is, and to open up to a much, much more present, uh, embodied, grounded, real sense of here I am, I'm alive, I, I'm, I'm part of nature, and uh, the world isn't made up of straight lines and neat and tidy boxes. So who am I really behind all of those rules, behind all of those injunctions? Who am I really? How do I reconnect with that? And how do I start living in that way uh, in my life? So the entrainment is all designed to support that self-discovery, that experience of rediscovering yourself. Yeah, and, and it's extraordinary when, uh, when we begin to learn through practice and experience uh, the technology and grace that at the deepest levels of our being is where we find the answers to what we're looking for. You know, what the meaning of life, the meaning of your life, what you're here to do, how your thing matches up with everything and you are both things at the same time in quantum physics, right? When they first started looking at these entities, they were either waves like off into infinity or they were little particular particles of whatever those things are. And so, and it, it, it depended how you look at it. And the same thing is, is with us. We are everything and we are something individually very, very uh, precious our diamond self, some schools talk about, and uh, to cultivate that and to live there. And, and Doug, I know you've done a lot of uh, uh, work with dreams and, and lucid dreaming, and I have too, both uh, working with, with clients and students and, and myself. And I know, uh, and of course, you know, uh, inspired by the work of uh, the great Carl Jung, but when you begin to tap into those uh, images, and the, and the worst thing you can say in a dream, oh, that was stupid. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> no, 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 no. These are, uh, if you begin to look at it, and, and I'll notice that 
and, I, and I've heard this reported from others that I've worked with, when you tap into that soul, that mysterious place of wisdom and guidance in our depths, it releases energy in our lives and we feel more conscious, we feel more alive, we feel more connected, we feel more, uh, at the same time, vulnerable in, in, in a good way. We become open to life instead of cut off. And uh, it, uh, yeah, it, it's extraordinary and, and it shifts everything. Yeah, because you're, you're not squashing yourself anymore. Uh, so suddenly who you are is, is free to express itself. Uh, you know, there's, there's open channels of energy now. What, one, um, one thing I'll just add to what you were asking, Doug, about the, the entrainment. Always with these tracks, I'm aiming to do a little bit better than last time with the entrainment. What else can I add? How can I make it even more impactful? So there's, there are multiple, multiple layers of binaural beats and isochronic uh pulses sound pulses um and i've i, I went to some lengths to find out how because because one of the things with entrainment is how do you make sure how do you make it engaging for the brain or you know you could say engaging for the person but how do you make it so that it remains interesting without being intrusive because there's nothing especially hypnotic about a jackhammer if you just have, you know, that's, that's so there's, there's limits to, to how intense you want the pulses to be before they become off-putting. So you, you, you need it to blend into the music and then you need there to be enough. And I mean, you both know this very well, but um, I'm, I'm saying it for, for an, everyone listening, you need it to be varied enough, uh, subtly varied enough where it might shift from the left to the right or where certain frequencies might be fractionally out of sync with each other. This is something I, so I, I used to um, experiment a lot with light and sound uh, machines and, and I still do from, from time to time, but it's very easy when using a light and that's where you get um, rhythmic pulsing lights along with rhythmic sounds. But when you, when you make one of those frequencies slightly out of sync with the other, what, what I found again and again is it becomes very engaging. What, what was a uniform pulsing field of light and a uniform pulsing um, soundscape becomes something that has a, an additional dimension to it. It's, you could say it's a bit like the difference between a public speaker who is head on to you and always talking like this versus a public speaker where there's something, there's more dynamism, there's more angles involved. And so that's an analogy, but in the same way with the, the sounds and the layers of entrainment that went into this track, which I, I think are especially powerful. Uh, truth be told, I did um, hours and hours of sound editing uh, towards the end with this, listening to it again and again. I felt pretty wired by the end. I, felt, <laughs> uh, you know, I was recommending to people, I, I don't think of this as a bedtime meditation. I think of this as, you know, this is a dose of intense, an intense meditative journey and you, 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 it's absolutely um, fine to spread that out over a course of days and a, and a course of weeks to give yourself a, a dose of, you could say, reconnecting uh, with your soul and then to carry on living your life and to find out what intuitions and what impulses come up, to find out what new ideas or new insights are coming to mind and then to go back and do you know, another cycle and another cycle and another cycle, rather than this isn't necessarily something you want to listen to seven times before bed um, because it's, right. yeah. it's, it's a transformational process. But yeah, there's that, so that, that there's some of these um, offset frequencies, which I've always found particularly powerful. And I've, I've, I've worked with that a lot more in this particular track. So that, that may be one of the reasons why I, mean, I know quite a, a lot of people, I think who've listened to it, have said this has got really powerful entrainment in it. And it may be that that's one of the additional elements there um, that means that rather than the brain habituating to it and saying, okay, uh, I mean, habituating essentially means that the brain gets a tiny bit bored of it. It starts to tune it out because it's been the same signal so much. So the more you can introduce some dynamism and variety into it, the more uh, the brain remains engaged and interested and curious as it takes you deeper into that hypnagogic dreamlike state. It, it's really interesting hearing you phrase it that way too, speaking of the offset frequencies just a little bit, because my experience of listening to this was that that element really sort of added a third dimension to it, a depth to it, which pulled me out 
well, didn't really pull me out of the state of reverie, but allowed me to bring it back more into the world by making the experience that much bigger and that much more tangible through through the different engagement of my brain in hearing those sounds. And so it it definitely helped me take the insights from the meditation and carry them with me. And I think that the bursts of uh, gamma, the little bits of, of gamma that were in there helped with that too, to, to pull it from this deep reverie and carry it forward into life, which really is the point of this. You know, it's not just a transient vacation. This is something that really is a potent force for change. And it's so clear to me in hearing it, how much work you've done to make all those pieces come together. That's so cool, Doug. Yeah, I'm really, really pleased that, you know, that, that's, that's exactly what I was aiming to create in, in layering them all in that way. So it's, it's great to hear about people having that exact subjective um, response to the, to the frequencies and the, and the soundscape. You know, one of my, my favorite American authors, uh, Edward Abbey, I believe this came from him or he was quoting it, but he said, do nothing that insults your soul. Do nothing that insults your soul. That's a great rule for life. And, and we also not only not want to insult that deepest part of ourselves where our uh, ethics are not made up, our deep values, but they're discovered. They're already there. And they're universal. Um, but we also need to cultivate the relationship with our souls. And, uh, this is, I mean, there, there's, there's a lot of things as, like I said, I, I did, you know, I was, I was a wilderness guide for years and did ex extended journeys into the wilderness and vision quests and sweat lodges and, and, and these sorts of things and music, right. And great literature. You know, I was, uh, been feeling really, uh, grateful for the Brits recently, just thinking all, all the gifts that you've given us, right from Shakespeare or the language of the King James Bible, even though it may not be the, the best translation ever. Gorgeous. The Beatles, you know, Harry Potter, uh, Tolkien, you know, it's a little island, man, you know, and, and we've all, you're right, we've all had our shadows, we've all done the things, but there's just been so much uh, giving us back Jimi Hendrix. Thanks. He had, to go, he had to go to London to be discovered. What's the matter with us? But anyway, so, so, uh, uh, in, in very soulful ways yeah. and, uh, the arts literature. And, and if you're, if you're not connecting with great art, it may be, there's something disconnected with you. Yeah. And, in where our main home is in Southern Utah, um, it's gorgeous, uh, mountains and red rock deserts and Doug you've been there and I, I use the, the wilderness as a mirror when I go out there and I, I can't just see just experience the beauty of it something's going on you know something I, I'm shutting down for some reason or there's a depression coming on or I'm not doing something that I'm supposed to be doing I'm in denial or in avoidance and all this stuff so so um, uh, when we begin to open and cultivate and relax into, right? And the good news is the deepest part of yourself is the best part of yourself. Mm. You know, I mean, you may, we have layers and layers that we go into when, when we do the interior work. And sometimes you may go through some really scary places where shadow material and you feel hatred and violence and God knows what's there. But if you just keep going, you'll, you'll hit into this, the soulful place, the place of, of human wisdom, hum, human connection, human purpose, human meaning, where um, the answer to, well, what is the meaning of life becomes very apparent. And not just the funny cliche, oh, it's unknowable and blah, blah. No, it is knowable. Absolutely knowable. And, and when we do that, that soulful connection and cultivation of soul, everything changes. We can read great literature and really connect with it. We can see, uh, you know, great movies and films. We can listen to music and reach our heart. We can, if we're musicians, we can play and perform. Or you as an actor, 
uh, I'm sure when you're at your best, when you're in that zone, that, that, that you're getting some kind of soul connection with the material, with the story, with, with uh, the script that just comes through and brings it all together. Absolutely. Absolutely. I made um, a somewhat flippant remark towards the beginning of this interview, and I, I want to just come back to it for a moment, not because I think people might misunderstand it, but because I think it's important to acknowledge that we talked about 20,000 layers up into the astral plane and beyond and spying a geometric shape of the soul. Now, there are mystics throughout the generations who have experienced profound visions and sometimes very consistent visions, sometimes very different, but sometimes very consistent visions of these deepest parts of, of who we are. There are people who have given beautiful, uh, absolutely intriguing, fascinating descriptions of what the soul is, of what the soul looks like. If it appeared in this dimension, what, what would it be? And I in no way invite anyone to be skeptical of those. I think that the, what we can discover through intuitions and through visions, it, it can be profoundly truthful at that level uh, and it can reveal something about who we are but my suggestion is if you want to discover your soul you don't try and go there first you don't try and go after right. the uh you know the the vision about what is this thing that i'm seeking that i can't find you start here you start with who who am i right here and now in my life and what's my calling and if that's hard to see at first, well, this is, I'm not saying you need this program, no. <laughs> but that's what the program is designed to help you to do. I mean, you, you, it, but it's available to all of us with or without this, this program. It's available to all of us now, right now, beneath and behind all of the distractions, all of the rules, there's something deeper that's, that's always here. And you know what it is because you know how it feels when you're being true to yourself, how it feels when you're being true to your soul. You know what it is when someone else is, when someone else is being true to themselves, true to their soul. And you, you might not know how you know it, but my strong suggestion is that's where to begin. If you're rediscovering your soul, if you're finding your soul, and it's connected with how you live your life, with, with um, what your calling is. It, it's connected with these things that that matter, that matter deeply. We don't have that many years on this planet to live our lives. So it's immensely important that we yeah. rediscover this and stay true to it. And then whatever visions come after that, whatever further transcendent understandings of the, the makeup of a human being, of consciousness, of soul, uh, they can be fascinating elaborations. They can be, you know, that, there's, there's far more to discover. I certainly don't think I've discovered the, the limits of human knowledge, not by any stretch. I'm, I'm still exploring. But as a beginning, begin with who you are and begin yeah. with what your calling is. Begin with knowing what it is to be true to your soul. Yeah. And, and there's a lot of practice. Therapy with a good therapist or union therapy, all of these ways are, are uh, to cultivate and do that. And you know it's time when you start feeling that hunger, when you start feeling that dissatisfaction with business as usual. And uh, I would imagine um, most of the people, and, and, and just my, you know, my probably thinking here, that come to iAwake and use this are because they're looking for, they're looking for more depth. They're looking for, even if they don't know it yet, uh, that's what, you know, that there's, there's an itch there that needs to be scratched. And that takes you down. Uh, the rabbit hole into the deep psyche and where purpose and meaning and poetry and love and myths and God and gods and goddesses and uh, the creator and all of that stuff becomes mm -hmm. uh, consciously available for our, uh, for our guidance and our awe and our worship. I, th I we, think... uh, we don't move Sorry. from Malkuth straight to Kether skipping Yassad and Tefereth along the way. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And, and I think most of, most of the issues that are confronting us um, as a, a species on our beautiful planet uh, 
could be attributed in some ways of just not going deep enough, just not acting. A lot of the, the, the questions about, about justice and inequality and the environment and healthcare and housing, I think if you begin to open yourself and live more deeply from this soul-centric place, what should be done and what needs to be done becomes rather obvious, you know? And, and why are there any hungry people when there, you know, when there doesn't have to be? There's plenty of food. Why are there any homeless children when they don't have to be? Why are people not having, being old and not being able to be taken care of? And it's like all of this stuff is like, if you, if you, yeah, play, play with those kind of deep service related issues uh, from a place of, Uh, shallow self-absorption there's just there's no answers there and we you know we, we, we open our Jesus said in the Sermon on the Mount he said blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God mm -hmm. I think that's that's a beautiful uh, a beautiful teaching that can really be seen in the context that we're talking about the pure in heart is the the connection with the deepest part of ourselves and, and getting the, the, the things that are blocked or the traumas or the old ideas or the fear of depth. I think people are scared, scared to death to go deep, you know, so we constantly need uh, distractions, you know, to, to keep us from that place. But when you get to that place then the pathway to God is open, the pathway to, you can call it God, you can call it, uh, uh, non-dual consciousness or enlightenment or awakening, but when we realize who and what we are and who and what we are in the deepest and on a human level, uh, the soul and its cultivation and its uh, guidance in our lives and in our collective lives is, is just essential to be who and what we were destined and potentially can be. And the great tragedy of a human life or humanity is if we don't become what we could have been, what we should have been, what we are called, mm. what the universe is inviting us to do. And you were talking about uh, the state of the world and, and social issues, John, and, and, and the environment. And one way that that links to what we were talking about earlier is that if you if you think of there being a left hemispheric uh rigid uh superficial representation of the world that we can buy into if we're not careful then that is what maintains the status quo this is how things are this is how everyone says things must be oh we can maybe have some nice dream it could be different but really really this is just how things are and that that's people being hypnotized by uh, their own left hemispheric, uh, superficial, rigid assumptions that this this must be how things are because it's how they are, seem to be, so they've got to remain that way. So finding a way to alter your consciousness so you can not just hope that there's other possibilities, but really sense them, really intuit them, and ha and have epiphanies that I haven't had and that you haven't had, that someone... Uh, may have six months from now, just you know, the, the ideas that no one has ever thought of, but not, not just an intellectual possibility, but a real sense of the world becoming different, of wow, we can do this, we can do this instead, that step by step, this is possible. I remember, I think I remember, in a previous interview for one of um, a, a previous release with I Awake that I did, I, I talked about wanting to create something on intuition. And uh, in terms of intentions being fulfilled, I think this is one of the additional benefits of this program, that it, it deeply puts you in touch with your intuitions about what's, what's possible for you, about what's possible for your life. And even from going through the process myself, and I know other people have had this as well, different ideas uh, start to come to you, different impulses of actually, no, I'm not doing that anymore. It's time for me to be doing this uh so it's it's recentering yourself back into the path of your soul into your soul calling 
And that's not just about you, that's about how you relate to the community around you, how you relate uh, to the world around you. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and, and I was thinking um, before, before um, we, we started the conversation, I mean, uh, when, when you're developing a practice, uh, at, at a certain point, the, the practice starts developing you and informing you about what you need to do. But uh, one way to work with these three tracks plus the extended um, uh, track is do uh, track one maybe for seven days to 10 days and just really absorb that. And then if you have time, just extend the meditation after the guided meditation, just hang out in that place. So I did that this morning with, with track three. It was fantastic. And uh, then after seven or 10 days, do track two, the same thing. Go through that. And then um, do track three for seven to 10 days. That might be a nice way to, uh, to work that. And, and uh, you know, we, we have, we have a, a growing library of stuff, but it is always there. If you get to the point where you're going, gosh, I just seem to be losing myself in the details or losing myself in, in the exteriors. And I need, I need that soul connection. This is a, this is a tool that you can, that can be part of your, a part of your, your arsenal, if you will, as the self battles with the self and uh, we do the work uh, uh, you can come back to and, and mix it into your, or do it every Monday morning to start the week Do one of them. I mean, there's, there's all kinds of really creative, beautiful ways we, you can add this to the interior uh, soul-centric practice. Yeah, that's, that, that's an ideal way of working with it. That's, that's what I had in mind when planning out the, the tracks. So it, so it is a journey. It is, it's the preparing the ground with the first track and then there's a process in the second track and then a way of integrating that into your life in the third track. And yes, ideally, you want to be spending a week, 10 days, even two weeks, just on one track and then moving on to the next one and then moving on to the next one. And after that, absolutely dip into them as and when you like, but it, it's, it's intended to be a journey and it's worth, it's worth having the patience and the discipline to take your time and, and, and do it in that way. Um, and the people have been getting great results from using it uh, in, in, in that way of, um, you're marking it out as well as uh, something that's important for you as a ritual. That's so it's not just, well, I'll try listening to this a few times. It's okay. This is a process. If you like your, I, I often talk about behavioral affirmations. People are very familiar with verbal affirmations, but what you do is also an affirmation of uh, a change you want to be making in your life. And if you're creating a space for yourself each and every day, for four weeks, for six weeks, saying, this is what I'm working on. I'm taking this sincerely. This is the change. It's, it's time. I've, I've had enough of feeling like X or feeling like Y or of compromising myself and forgetting who I am. Enough is enough. I want to start doing things differently. This is a, a program, a, a way that you can create a ritual for yourself, a transformational ritual for yourself to do that. And by taking the time to space it out in that way, you're making it a more powerful behavioral affirmation for yourself, inner affirmation for yourself that you're ready to commit, to commit to yeah. living your life with soul. And, uh, and, and if you're already on the path, you can use this as, as a way of, of uh, renewing your vows, if you will, or deepening that connection. Uh, in March, well, it'll be two years in March, I had a massive heart attack and almost died. And uh, they put a splint in and opened up the artery, and, and here I am. But um, it was one of those life, boy, uh, attention getters. But I was, and, and after, right after the heart attack, I was in the ICU. Uh, I had like five hours of just incredible grace and clarity emotionally, intellectually, spiritually. And I was, you know, it's like, God, you know, can I call you by your first name? <laughs> We're getting kind of intimate here. Um, uh, you know, is, am I on the right path? You know, am I, is this what I'm supposed to be doing? And uh, yeah, there were some things, some issues I, I needed to clean up and maybe some issues I'm still working on, but in generally it was very affirming. This is why you're here. This is what you're here to do. And it's okay. Just don't fall asleep at the wheel, you know? Yeah. Uh, stay awake and, and deepen 
and, and, and you know, more compassion, more love, more skillfulness, more wisdom, all of the stuff we bring to our life callings. So, mm -hmm. and Joe, you're, you're, you're such a gem yourself. We're so delighted to have you as part of this creative family that is I awake the team and all of those who are part of our, our ongoing community uh, and growing community of, of practitioners who are, are working to transform themselves at whatever level uh, they're ready to do the work, but that's what we're doing together. So thank you so much. Thank uh, you, John. Thank you. Uh, it's, it's a real pleasure, a privilege to be part of this team and, and part of this work.